Now let's talk about finding the volume of a paraboloid using cylindrical shells. And we've already found the volume of a paraboloid using other methods, but we're going to find it again with cylindrical shells just to demonstrate the cylindrical shell method. Uh, the cylindrical shell method is sometimes a little bit challenging, so we'll start with a fairly easy shape, the paraboloid. And then after we've demonstrated and seen the cylindrical shell method, we'll move on to find the volume of some more complicated shapes. But we'll start with a paraboloid. Remember that a paraboloid is formed by taking a parabola and rotating it about an axis. So let's imagine this parabola here rotating about the y-axis to form a three-dimensional solid shape something like this. And we can put some dimensions on here. This parabola would, paraboloid would have a certain radius r and a certain height h and the relationship between R and H, this point right here, would be the point RH. And the relationship between R and H would be determined by the equation for this curve, which would be a known equation. What we want to do is make a little thin cylindrical shell. So let's pick a point down here, anywhere along the curve. Let's pick one down here near the bottom and call it XY. And as the parabola itself spins around to create the paraboloid, this little point here ends up spinning around to create a circle. So there's a, a circle down here. And this circle is actually the base of a cylinder. So let's draw the cylinder. Draw a line straight up from here and one over here. And those lines will stop at the top of the paraboloid. It's a finite height. And imagine this rotating around here up top to form the top. And imagine this is a thin shell. So I'm going to draw it with some thickness here just to help me think about the volume of it. So I can draw in these little lines down here. Remember though we're actually imagining this to be infinitely thin. But just to help me visualize it, I'll draw it with a, a finite thickness. But the calculation will assume that it's actually infinitely thin. Now this shell has a certain radius and that radius is x. So I'll draw this in here. That radius is x. And this thickness of the shell right here, let me draw little dotted lines here. The thickness of the shell from there to there is distance dx. And then let's suppose we know this curve and we'll make it simple. The equation for this curve is y equals x squared. Now let's think about the volume of this little shell. This, um, this shell has a certain thickness to it, dx, and it has a certain circumference, which is 2 pi times the radius. But the radius of the shell is not this r here. The radius of the shell is the x. And what we want to find is the volume of the shell. And I'll call the volume dv. And that's the key, finding this dv. Well, dv is going to be the circumference of the shell. Remember, we're imagining unrolling this shell into a rectangular slab. And that circumference is the, the long dimension, the length of the rectangular slab. And that's 2 pi times the radius. 2 pi, and the radius of that shell is x, not r. It's x. 2 pi x times the height. Now the height of the shell is this height right here, not the height h. Height h helps us find the height of the shell, but the height of the shell is actually h minus y because this distance right here is y. Remember this point has coordinates x, y. So from the axis up to that height is distance y. And so the rest of the height has to be h minus y. So the volume dv is the circumference times the height times the thickness. And the thickness is dx. So getting that formula correct is the key to solving the whole problem finding out what that dv is and it's worth taking the time to set it up carefully and trying to make a good sketch that will help you see it so that you can get that step done correctly because this is what we need to integrate and if we don't integrate the right thing we don't get the right answer so now notice one thing here we have a dx and we have an x there and we have a y and that's not good we need our function here to be a function of x because we have a dx right there so I need to put in some some function of x there for y and that's easy in this case because y equals x squared so I'll just rewrite this as dv is 2 pi x 
times h minus x squared in this case dx. Now that's the case because this particular equation was y equal x squared. If we had a different curve we'd have a different different expression substituted in right there. Now dv is the little volume of one shell and hopefully you can see that if we drew a bunch of little shells at a bunch of different radii a little tiny shell here and a bigger one and a bigger one all the way out till we filled up the whole circle there that the total volume of all of those shells would equal the total volume of the paraboloid and that's what we're trying to find so integrating this is what's going to give us our answer the other thing to note is is to think about this point xy right down here at that edge along this edge the cylinder, the cylindrical shell, doesn't exactly fit into the paraboloid because the edge of the paraboloid is at a slope and the bottom of the cylinder is flat. So there's a little bit of error introduced in the calculation there, but just recognize that that error goes to zero when the, when the thickness of the shell is infinitely thin. So the volume calculation, when we integrate this, the volume calculation does end up being exact. Not just, it's not just an approximation.